today I'm going to be talking about my Ninja H2 and how it compares to the new Hayabusa, new Gen 3 Hayabusa. A lot of people are asking me, well, how does it compare? You know, are they very similar? They're actually completely different motorcycles, the way they ride, everything. So in this video, we're going to go out on the Hayabusa, we're going to go out on my Kawasaki Ninja H2, and we're going to do a direct comparison. And I'm going to try and convey to you how these machines differ and how they're not really in the same class of motorcycles. Chopsy, roll the intro. So first of all, let's start on the Hayabusa. Let's power her up. On the H2, how does she compare on the sound test? Now this isn't quite fair because this has got a full system on it. Obviously, it's gonna be louder. Sounds a tad angry. So for 2021, Suzuki have reintroduced the Hayabusa. It disappeared from the UK for the last couple of years, but it's back. It makes 184 horsepower, great dollopings amounts of torque. It's a little bit down in power than the old Hayabusa, but what Suzuki have very sensibly done as part of the Euro 5 sort of remake of this, of this machine, if you like, they've given it much more torque, 10% more torque in the mid range. So down a little bit, bit on top end power, but a beefed up mid-range, which is what this bike is all about. I mean, a lot, I wasn't even going to do this video. There's a few people said to me, but how, how does it compare to your H2? And I just assume they realise that it's a completely different kettle of fish to this. This bike is so much more comfortable, so much more usable, so much more practical than my H2. I'm actually quite surprised, riding position, I was going to say the, uh, the Hayabusa was way more comfortable than this. I remember being this, this big fairly uncomfortable last time I rode it. But actually today, <laughs> it doesn't feel too bad. The back of the bike is higher, the bike is higher off the ground, it's, you know, it's a bigger stretch down to the ground. You, you're over, it's a much shorter bike, obviously the wheelbase is much shorter. Your elbows are almost touching your knees. The, the foot peg position, I'd say, is about the same, but you feel like you're, you're hunched over the front. You've got more weight on your wrists, whereas on the Hyobus, you've got more of a stretch for the bars because the bike is longer. On this, you do feel hunched over a little bit, and I guess it feels maybe a little bit small. I'm 6'2", maybe it feels a little bit small. You know, my elbow, I can just lift my leg slightly, and my knees are touching my elbows, literally. So, you know, you've got a long way on your wrist. But, saying all that, I remember last time I rode this, I was moaning that it was really uncomfortable. But, I'd say it's only 10% more uncomfortable than the Hayabusa, maybe 15%. One thing which is different, the seat on this is rock hard. On the Hayabusa, you've got a nice, big, really well padded seat. You've got a little tiny, thin piece of ply board on this. So that's what it feels like. And uh, yeah, the seat is very hard. I'd really like to put a bit more padding into this seat. The thing which really impressed me with the Hayabusa, when I, I was lucky enough to get invited to the, the, the UK launch of this bike, so I did ride it as part of the launch. We did the stuff on the runway. And if you have not seen that video, I'll put a link at the top. Shameless plug. <laughs> but it, it's an, it's an amazing, what really surprised me, I think the standout feature of this machine for me is just how easy it is to ride how easy everything is how effortless it is to make speed and make progress on this bike and the standout thing is the suspension i think there's a lot of standout things with this bike but i think for me what really stands out is the suspension suzuki have got it set up beautifully okay you know it's not the gold stuff it's not olin's it's KYB, you know, so it's not the best suspension in the business, 
but what Suzuki are very very good at is just setting suspension up so it's beautiful this thing is plush plush you can throw it around you can go on really bad bad surfaces and it still soaks it up the suspension is beautiful very very well configured suspension on the h2 is again kyb i think actually i think it's kyb again but it's a much higher spec suspension than what is on the hayabusa it's actually got an olin's unit on the back so it's got olin's rear shock which is very plush and the KYB forks, but higher spec again. The bike actually is firm, much firmer ride than the Hayabusa. You know, it's, it's jumping me around a little bit. It's better handling because it is a little bit lighter, you know, and all the geometry is full on sports bike geometry. On the H2, I can feel the tarmac a little bit more than I can on the Hayabusa. The Hayabusa is pretty good, actually. It gives you quite a lot of feedback from the tarmac. Which you may not expect it to this has a little bit more feedback not a huge amount though actually quite surprising how good that higher booster is the riding position is sports bike like you know it's not it's not a touring bike it's not as comfortable as the h2 sx which is much more geared up for touring because that bike obviously can put panniers on it you can put no luggage on this as suzuki make no luggage to fit this bike you may better get some you know, aftermarket alternatives shortly, but nothing from Suzuki apart from a tank bag. So this is now this is a sports bike, but it is the ultimate Grand Tourer. Whoa! Calm it down, Chopsy. <laughs> this bike has almost got one speed. <laughs> that is very, very fast. This bike isn't standard, not only have I got the full system, this bike is also tuned to uh, about 250 horsepower. <laughs> it's quick, you know. These are about 215 horsepower standard at the crank. This one's been tuned to about 250 at the crank. It's just like the basic tune on one of these. You can go much further with the tuning on these bikes. You can go well into the, the 300 horsepower mark with these machines but i've been quite conservative i've just unlocked a bit of the potential of this machine to take it to about 250 horsepower this is a 1300 cc and what is brilliant about this another reason why you can just effortlessly pull you along this bike is the low down torque and power it's got you can take it right down i mean that is 1500 revs in fifth gear at 25 miles an hour is quite happy give it some welly and it will just pull nicely you do not have to thrash this bike you do not have to thrash it at all you can do nine times out of ten this will deliver all the speed you need and you can keep it below 7000 rpm honestly i think this engine would go on forever what i do love on the h2 with that supercharger it gives you grunts this has got very similar levels of grunt to what the uh, Hayabusa has. I was, I was, I was going to say this is way more powerful than the Hayabusa low down, but you know what, just then I'm not so sure it is. That's felt quite similar levels of grunt to what the Hayabusa's got. Hmm, quite surprised. Also, coming through town, I've got no cruise control on this. No way to alleviate my my wrists. Just got to grin and bear it. Or get off, of course. I've got on this bike at the moment when it's in full power mode it's nowhere near as easy to ride as the Hayabusa I think I'd definitely be faster 
through a set of twisties on the high booster just because you do have to feel like you're sort of wrestling with the throttle a little bit on this. It's just so instant on the power. very much a, a different feeling motorcycle to throw around. special this. I've got other videos talking about why this bike's special so I'm not going to cover that in this video but it's just an event it's just I think it's the noise the theatre of it all you know it's 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 still a quick bike don't get me wrong you know for a set of twisties it does handle people say oh they don't handle it handles fine yeah it's not it doesn't handle as well as the uh, s 1000 R. I'm riding at the moment but it still handles very well it's just one of those bikes where it doesn't suit having to swap them between bikes with this this is really a bike it almost needs to be your own the only bike you have and when you ride it you, you get used to it it's, it's, it's taken me a little while to adjust to this the power delivery is silky smooth S silky smooth power you know it, it, it does build but it's, it's quite linear, it's not a sudden rush, you know, a lot of obviously straight four sports bikes, when you hit eight grand they take off and it's, it's not like that, it's very linear, you've got all of that torque, all of that power low down, and with the rejigged torque maps, you know, you can really notice that pulling hard, at sort of 5,000, but as you rev it, you know, it doesn't really kick at the top, it sort of carries on building speed, but there's no shove, you know, it's all there throughout the entire rev range. Direction changes. Yeah, it's, 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 you've got to get your line set up in advance. The side where you're going to point it, then just gently lower it in. But it will go. It will lay down beautifully. It won't object to to being uh, on its side. You know, it's, it's perfectly happy to be on its side. So the brakes are very powerful when you pull them <laughs> but uh, it's just a beautiful beautiful bike to ride <laughs> it's definitely a bike I think you've got to lick, hang off of a little bit more to get the best out of it ride a bit more like a sports bike I guess that's the old old foul I know you guys loved that in the last video <laughs> It's a bit more skittish than the Hayabusa. You know, normally with a straight four, you ride it in a gear down. So you're in the power, you got it on the power, it's there to respond. I think this rides better when you ride it the other way. When you ride it a gear up and then use that torque. You don't want to be back and forth on settling the suspension. You want to be smooth, you want to be progressive, you want to just gently caress it round the bends but also carry you know a load of speed this bike is all about that grunt which kicks in about four grand 
and you can throw it around. I mean, what? This thing handles amazingly for such a big, heavy bike. And not only big and heavy, for a long bike as well. That's the thing with it. It is very long. Let's give it a little bit of beanage. It is fast. It is fast. You've got that torque. You open it up and it delivers, it is, it's fast. But of course, it's nowhere, nowhere near as fast as my H2. Okay, let's give it a bit of beans. Bit of beanage. give it full beans. That wasn't full power. That wasn't full power. Yeah, not until you get to sort of third gear, I think, and you really unleash it. I'm on traction level three, which traction control also does. The wheelie control on this bike is not separated. So the more traction you have, the less wheelies you have. So I'm going to just try and uh, I'm going to take the traction up a little bit let's take the traction up to five but then we'll probably see quite a lot of intervention on five let's try it again a little ticket in first gear <laughs> traction control it was interfering and you know and cutting the power and, but even still the wheel is coming up and it's uh, you can't unleash it fully until third gear really third gear until you dare give it full power it is so so fast there's nothing else I've ever ridden compares to that speed you know you wouldn't it's 250 horsepower you wouldn't expect it to would you it is incredible so powerful so powerful wow that is uh that's amazing <laughs> that is incredible what a thing the hayabusa just makes me want to relax chill out enjoy it you know the view you get when you're riding it is is second to none i think it's the best view of any motorcycle you look down and you see that brilliant those brilliant clocks a mixture of analog gauges and a tft the perfect solution i mean that is just an incredible cockpit on this you don't so much as, as sit on this bike you when you're aboard right to overtake. More than you're ever, ever, ever going to need. Around the bends, just, oh, it's so nice. And then when you've had enough, just flick it up another gear and bang! you got your torque again for another gear. What an absolute missile! Yeah, I just needed to get used to it a bit recalibrate my brain to H2 handling because it can do it when you know how to ride it oh, that's a lot of weight on the wrist coming down there when you're braking Woo. yeah it's, it can do it it can do it when you're being cute. There's no sense of drama on this, you know, it's very quiet as well in stock form and we can't compare these bikes without talking about volume. But of course, the H2 is also very quiet in stock form. Mine isn't standard, so mine is a, a bloody noisy. But I think if you put a couple of Yoshi cans on this, it would sound lovely. It's a deep noise. There's a bit of airbox roar as well. But a set of Yoshis on this, I think it would sound delightful. I wouldn't want too much noise out of this. Because if I had one of these, I'd want to cover decent mileages. I'd want to go places on it. I want to see things on it. 
and I wouldn't want it droning and noisy but I just like a little bit more volume from the exhaust not a bit, not a lot just a bit not a lot <laughs> the seat is very very comfortable loads of padding in that seat so I mean you can I've done 400 mile days on this and it's, it's pretty comfortable <laughs> So the Hayabusa, it may be a hyperbike like the H2, but the H2 is very much a sports bike. A sports bike first and foremost. Full sports bike position, honked over, incredibly aggressive power delivery, uncomfortable position. You know, it's a little bit heavy, but it's still very much a sports bike to ride. The Hayabusa, on the other hand, is a GT bike. Very, very much a GT bike. It's just lovely. You don't feel like you've got to push it. As I say, this bike, if anything, this bike slows me down. This bike makes me ride slower. When you think Hayabusa, you think, oh, it's crazy fast. It's, it's a mental machine. It's not. This thing really is a pussy, an absolute pussycat, if you want it to be. I could see myself owning one of these. <laughs> I could. If you only want to have one bike in the garage, this really is an excellent all-round machine. The only thing this bike cannot do would be track days. You would not want to take this on track. It's just a little bit too... You could go and have some fun. You could have fun on it, but, you know, you're not going to be uh, pushing lap times, you know. It would probably feel a little bit weighty on a really tight, twisty track. But as a road bike, I think it ticks so many boxes, this. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, there we go, guys. Thanks very much for watching, as always. Really appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do all sorts of stuff, bike reviews, comparisons, gear reviews, equipment reviews, also garage build series and stuff like that. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider pressing that subscribe button and ticking that bell and i'll see you guys on the next video cheers this is power level one which is full power <laughs> What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. Oh! <laughs>